Hello friends, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Laura, and this is the Last Minute Laura channel. And when you come here, you can usually find me making something or doing something crafty. Today is going to be a beautiful day, so I am going to take you around with me to enjoy it. Oh, look at that fluffy bomb. I got a big heavy rock, probably like one week away. So I've got a couple of plans for today. I am going to start by letting the chickens out. And then we are going to weed out the herb garden because it's got a little overgrown and I'm ready to be able to see some of my herbs again. So I wanna get that done. I'm also going to do a little bit of sewing today. I've got a new sewing machine and a project on the go. So I'm going to do a little bit of that as well. Later in the evening, Alex and I are going to have a campfire. If we do that, stay tuned because we are going to try and get some footage of the little bandit. We've got a raccoon who keeps coming to eat the chicken's grain. So I'll see if I can get a video of him. And of course, there will be tons of chicken content and garden content. We'll do a garden tour in the afternoon and all of that fun stuff. So if that sounds up your alley, then go make a tea or a snack and come along with me. And I would love if you subscribe. If you take a second and click the like button and the subscribe button if you're new. If you're not new, I hope you're already subscribed. But anyway, join me. It's a great time. There's a great community with us and uh, Let's get the day started. Before we do anything though, we have to do what we always do. Let's go let out the chickens. Good morning. Good morning. Good boy. Good boy. Oh yes, you're so sweet. So early. Why did you even get up then? If it's so early and you're tired, you go back to bed with Alex. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Bluebell. Good morning, baby. Good morning, Clover. Good morning, Nighthawk. Good morning, Pearl. What are we gonna name him? Look at that hair. Good morning, sunflower. Hey there, Miss Sweet Pea. Hey, babies. Hi. It's just a bird, girl. No worries. It's just Mr. Blue Jay. Good morning, Blue Jay. Good morning, little ones. Hi, everybody. These eight chicks are the other chicks from the same hatch as sweet peas. These ones are being raised inside. I did try to introduce them to her. She wasn't interested. There's Miss Pepper. Hi, baby. Anyway, these guys have upgraded to a larger space so that they can run around. They do still have a heat lamp, but they can now use a hanging feeder, so that means I don't have to change it as often because they don't mess it up. I'm very, very interested to see how that little fluffy, puffy chick develops. It's gonna have puffy cheeks and fluffy feet. That's one of Clementine's babies. Genetics! It's a little while later now. Birds are out, everybody's doing well, but we're getting some loud um, yelling from the rooster saying, time to bring us breakfast. So that's what I'm gonna do. Why don't you guys just sit here while I do that? And then I'll just grab a scoop of sunflower seeds for our little blue jay friend. Let's go feed him. Good morning. Oh no, no, you stay in there. You guys are so goofy. There's food everywhere. You don't have to get in the bucket. Oh, look at that fluffy bum. She's so small. Look at that fluffy butt. Baby. 
Hi. Yeah. Hey. You're like, get out of my way. I'm trying to snack. Get out of my way. Aren't they so sweet? Hi. Hi. What am I doing there, huh? Hi, pretty girl. And hello, my queen. My lovely Diane. <laughs> what is the scream I heard in here? Hello. Why are you screaming? What are you screaming for? Poor baby. Hi. It's a pretty cute little baby bird in a sunbeam, if you ask me. Okay, so chickens are fed. The sun is up. It's not too high in the sky, though, so we are going to get started in the herb garden. This herb garden is pretty. It's pretty full. I think you can see a lot of our plants have really bushed out. I've added a few indoor plants like house plants. I've got my Hoyas here, but basically it just looks overgrown. Like you can't even see much of my creeping mint underneath this big chamomile bush. So I want to just sort of harvest a bunch and also pull out weeds, tidy up. So let's try and find a spot for you to sit while I do it. Also, I moved out a few plants onto the stairs, some of my cacti and succulents. I moved them out several days ago. They're still not happy about it, but they'll be okay. More petunias. All right. I kind of want to harvest like everything and then let it all just sort of grow back. <laughs> so I've got summer savory here. I think it'll be easier to manage the weeds once I've removed a bunch of the plants for eating. We are also expecting a bunch of days of rain, like three or four days in a row we're supposed to get rain. So I'm going to give everybody a really good haircut and the rain will fix it. There we go. Nice haircut. All right, so now the garden's had a haircut, it's gonna be time to pull out weeds. I need to get rid of bindweed, which is like a wild morning glory, and it gets into everything. Here's its flowers. So that's bad news if it's flowering. Anyway, uh, let me show you what I pulled out because it doesn't look that much different. So this is what came out of the garden. Lemon thyme, silver thyme, and regular green thyme. Then we've got uh, lemon sage. Then we've got regular green sage and white sage. And then I've got oregano, rosemary, lots of mint this is all catnip summer savory and i didn't harvest any of the chamomile yet that's like a separate job there's just too many flowers also this here is spanish moss it's an air plant it's a variety of tillandsia and it is growing very happily outside there i cleaned it up a little bit hung it back nicely on that branch isn't it pretty the rest of the job for this garden I think I'll do off camera, but I'll show you in the evening. I'll probably pick the chamomile. I don't know, I really like it as a big bush of daisies, but I have to pick the blossoms so that it keeps making more. <laughs> Another egg has been laid, I believe. It's warm now. I'm gonna go inside and have something to eat and uh, 
I'll get back to you a little later. Okay, so I was just about to sit down and get some preliminary work done on a sewing project. I have to read the instructions and whatnot. You'll see that later. I was gonna sit down and have some tea. Alex made me a cup of tea and I thought this is a great time for us to try our rose petal jelly from last week. So here it is. The jelliness is, you can see it's holding together as one big clump of jam. Delightful. And now we're gonna taste it. So I toasted some bread and I put um, butter on it. And now we're gonna find out. I really hope it's not gross. Can you imagine if it was gross? I'm surprised it uh, got finished in a week. Like I would have thought jam takes longer. Oh, it was done the day I, fin I made it. See, I didn't know those things. See how there's ro there's little petals yeah, in it? It's... Those are chamomile petals. Let me see if you can see it on camera. Do you see yeah, the little pink it. petal? That's a chamomile petal. I took just the white petals off and put them in the jam when it was finished to add a little floral flair. Oh, thank you. That's really rosy. It's really rosy. Like, yeah, it's sweet jam. Like, you taste it and you're like, it could be apricot jam, it could be peach jam, who knows. But, there's a clear floral smell to it. Rosy. Like, rose, like there's totally. actual rosy smell. Oh, that's cool. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to capture the rosiness of it. What do you think? So, my first reaction was color yellow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And obviously the whole the jam idea too. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't tell that it was rosy from this itself, but my, as you know, my smell isn't that great. My smell is not um, great. Once you brought the concentrated solution near me, I could smell the roses. Totally. Yeah, I can. You get, can smell roses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it tastes really nice. Mm -hmm. Very delicate. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice with like uh, fluffy cream cheese. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very happy about that. Rose jam, highly cheesecake. recommend. Ooh, a rose cheesecake. Interesting. Wouldn't that be good? Like put ro make rose water or something and then use this in like the icing. With rose, pair it all. Ooh. Anyway, um, I'm going to get back to work. I have to read all the instructions for this bodice because I'm putting a facing around the raw edges so that I don't have any raw edges on my dress. After I finish reading all the instructions and sort of figuring out my next steps, I'll bring you back so that we can get started on actually doing a little bit of sewing. Okay, say bye. Bye. Bye, enjoy. Okay, so here's what is up. Well, I've already gone through the instructions up to this point. However, I did not attach the shoulders together, so my garment is still open at the shoulders. But you can see I've got my front bodice piece, I've got my ties, and I've got my side bodice pieces and my back. So the instructions want me to sew the shoulders together now and then do the facing for the neckline. Before I can do the facing, I need to finish my inside seams. So I cut down my seam allowance on one side and now I'm going to fold over the seam allowance from the other side and just whip stitch it down. I don't think I have enough to do a double fold and have like a fully finished edge. If I do, I'll do that. But I think I'll do that just so that everything is nice and clean. So I'm gonna just take my, you can see there's the cut seam, I folded it over. Now I'll just whip stitch that. That's gonna take a while. while now I got most of my seams finished I did all of the side seams and I did these back seams I haven't figured out what I will do for these front ones yet Ta -da! so this seam is done this seam is not done I'll do that one this afternoon and then I don't know what to do for these ones what do you think I should do Anyway, the sun has moved now, so we should be able to be outside and in the shade. So I can show you the herb garden, because I want to take a break from hand sewing. I'm going to show you what I did when I said I was weeding the herb garden. So I was wrong about the lighting. I came outside and the herb garden is still in full direct sun. So I don't want to show it to you right now. It's not at its most beautiful. 
I'll wait until the house casts a shadow on it and that way you can see it in all of its magical beauty. But because it's not time to show you yet, I am going to start another project. I have a hammer and I have a pillowcase full of dry clay. This I collected last year, I processed it, I was even working with it, uh, and then I left it and it dried out to a very dry crumble. I've got lots of big clumpy pieces and a lot of dust in here. And what I'm gonna do is hammer some of this down into a more fine dust. And then I'm gonna add it to a big bucket and add some water. And I don't think we're gonna be able to make anything with it for this video, but for the next video, I think we'll be doing some homemade, home processed clay. So I'm gonna go get my bucket and I'm gonna figure out how we're going to pound this clay out. I don't have anything to grind it with, so I'm just gonna smack it with a hammer. Okay, so I got a big heavy rock with one flat side and a nice grip. I've got a hammer and I've got my clay. I swept this uh, patio here. I'm gonna just dump my clay out. It's been sitting in this pillowcase for like six months and the pillowcase somehow completely crumbled. It's 100% cotton and it's just like dissolving. So here is my pile of clay. I believe this is already tempered as well, which means I think I already added sand and grit to it. We'll have to see once I rehydrate it. But for now, I'm just gonna pound it into a dust. Andy Ward, who is a uh, YouTube pottery, ancient pottery uh, teacher, he um, uses a corn grinder, like a hand milled corn grinder to grind up his Clay, but he like does that as a thing. So since I don't have a corn grinder, a rock will work. Also, this clay was harvested uh, from a local riverbed in part, and then in part from the clay from my backyard. When it's fired in a, um, a campfire, like outside, it makes a orange, like a terracotta pot. So next week for the vlog, we'll make the clay pot. Today, we're going to prepare the clay. Next week, we'll make the clay pot. The week after that, we'll fire the pot. So subscribe and then you can follow along the whole process. Also, as a side note, if you want to learn how I harvested this clay from a riverbed, join my Patreon. I have a recipe that I will be uploading for patrons on how you harvest the clay and how you refine it for making pottery. Along with that bullet journal spread, that recipe for how to make clay, you also get access to the exclusive Discord, which is like a chat room for all the people who hang out on this channel. Lots of people who hang out in the live streams, which are Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. And you can just ask questions in the Discord. You can upload photos of whatever you're working on. We just use it to communicate and it's an awesome chat room. So definitely something I recommend if you're into that. If you're not into it, then you totally don't. <laughs> Let me show you what it looks like. So I didn't grind it up into the finest powder ever, but that's okay, because this is gonna soak for a whole week. And now I'm gonna just put it into here. And there we go, we've got some clay. Now, let's go add some water to it. Just on my way to go get the hose, and look at that, one of our peonies opened. And the daisies I transplanted look great. I have a Shasta daisy that has flowers about to open. One of these guys that I don't remember the name of. And then this, so fun. Even the hosta's doing really well. Okay, let me go get the hose for the clay. All right, so now this clay is gonna sit in water in this bucket for a week and the clay is going to suspend in the water. Any sand or rocks or bits of things that are not clay are gonna sink to the bottom or float to the top and the clay will just sit in a sort of between state, submerged, suspended in the water and it'll absorb a lot of water. It's gonna be great. So do be sure to come back next week because I will be using that clay to make a little clay pot, some terracotta. And then, like I said, the week after we'll fire it and we'll have some handmade pottery. Some handmade pottery like this. I made this last 
summer out of that exact clay. So this clay pot, let me show you up close. You can see it's fired to be this beautiful terracotta orange. I put a hole in the bottom so I can put a plant in it. Isn't that just lovely? It's so fun, it's just a little fun thing, but it's made from dirt from my backyard and I think that's great. Also, while we are sitting here, let me show you the seedlings I've got going right now. I am down to just one, two, three, four, and a bit seedling trays. I'm almost all planted. <laughs> here in this one, I have some marigolds, some zinnias, more marigolds right here. I've got some cleone, calendula back here, and a couple of chamomile, and some basil as well. Down here, more marigolds. These are all ones that I pulled out of the garden that had self-seeded. I pulled them out during our last rain because I didn't want them to overcrowd each other and I just have to find a new spot for them. Same thing with this basil, more cleome, a couple of dill back here and some more basil. And this seedling tray that doesn't have much coming up in it yet is going to be, I believe we're gonna have some more zinnias, more cosmos, some more green beans, and I did some sweet peas as well earlier in the week just to see if I could get a few more coming up. I see one green bean coming. Do you see it? That'll be a green bean. And down there at the bottom, that is just marigolds and basil, which I am just sort of shoving into every garden. I also have a couple of decorative hot pepper plants that I have to find a spot for. They have a blooming nasturtium there. Beautiful petunias and some Thai basil on this side, petunias. Probably 45 more minutes and uh, we'll be able to look at the herb garden. <laughs> When the shadow passes to here, we'll get good lighting. Okay, well, I still have to wait a little while for the sun to move. I'm gonna go make Alex and I some supper because it's just about supper time now. And when the sun moves, I will show you the back garden. Don't worry, we still have lots to do today. Okay, the sun has moved. Let's check out the herb garden. I think it looks really good now. Okay, the wind has picked up a little bit, which is not ideal, so apologies for the audio, but let's just look at what we've got in here. I have a coffee plant. I transplanted a coffee plant from my house plants into the garden just for the summertime. It's already got two new leaves since coming outside. It's very happy out here. Then some petunias. Here's the mint. I cut it down. I've got my Hoyas here. So far so good. I chopped down the onions. They will grow back most likely. And then I've got parsley here. Mojito mint, I chopped it all back. Then the sage, I chopped it mostly back. All of the different sage I chopped. The sweet alyssum is looking really good. It's spreading. This set of blooms is almost done, but it'll put out another set. Chamomile, happy dill. The thyme, I chopped all the thyme, except for the creeping thyme. I chopped everything way back, and I put some more stones in this area as well. Mint chopped back. I also made sure every mint plant is now surrounded by stones, just so that I can keep them kind of in order. And then my creeping mint. Oh, look, it's flowering. Teeny tiny little purple flowers. Aren't these so pretty? For the chamomile, I wrapped a little cotton thing around all of the flowers and I staked it up. I just have to trim the string, but that's just gonna allow a little bit more light to get under here so that the creeping mint can be lit. It's just holding everything more compact together. Aloe looking awesome. I think that's gonna look really cool like that if everything grows in. The sunflower has a little bit more room now because I cut the catnip way back and I blocked it off with some rocks. This is comfrey I got from my mom. She has it growing in her yard, so I transplanted it to add to this like medicinal herb garden. And then I found out this is actually called shisho. Look how pretty it is. It's just so dark purple and the top is so, it's so pretty. Isn't that pretty? Coming along really well. And the little bush basil behind it. It's spicy globe bush basil, so cute. I've got tons of this lettuce leaf basil in here now. Pretty much anywhere where there's space, I've filled it with basil because I love it. And I'll just make so much pesto. This is one of the lettuce leaf varieties. This is just like a regular sweet basil. See the difference in the shape of the leaves? This one's round, this one's like rumply. Ooh, that's an even better example. Look how ruffly that one is. Looks like lettuce. 
mint got chopped down again. I chopped some of the columbine down, just the dry stuff. This nasturtium's really taken off. Looks really good there. Doesn't that fill in so nice? And the one back there is being eaten by something, but I'm not worried about it. Some more mint. The parsley, I didn't bother chopping it back. It's pretty tight still. It's not really like, doesn't really need a haircut. And it looks like a cute little bush, so I like it. Look at these petunias. It's such a like dark indigo. It's so pretty. And this begonia. Oh, I love it. Look, more of that lettuce leaf basil over there. Some flat parsley here. So this is curly parsley. You can see the leaves are all ruffly. That's flat parsley. Here is some summer savory. More of that shisho over here. This one's growing a lot faster. And then I've got daylilies here. And now we're back to the beginning. So there is the whole herb garden. Oh, I actually missed something. Also, purple basil. Oh, and this succulent. So there is the herb garden all weeded, all ready for another week of rain. Now everything can grow and get awesome and big and bushy again. And back over there, we have all of these lovely, partially dried out, wilted herbs that I can now package up for use. They've had all day for the creepy crawlies to get away. And now it's time to figure out how I'm gonna be storing these. Maybe I will store these until tomorrow morning and ask if people in the live stream what to do with each one of them. Come to the live stream, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8 a.m. Hey, baby. <laughs> you guys are so cute. Hi, Nighthawk. Look at these little fluffies. Hi, guys. Hi, baby. Hey. You can't eat my freckles. Come back for you later. All right, well, it's not quite golden hour yet. Let's go water the plants inside because we're getting rain for all the outside plants so we don't have to water outside tonight, but I do need to water my house plants. They have been a little bit neglected. So come, let's go do it. I pulled all that out of that herb garden. I feel bad for my little plant babies. Not for my succulents, they've been so happy since I neglected them. They finally aren't over water. Woo! But everything else is like, please water me. So I will. Sorry, everybody. Sorry. Apologies. My apologies. Do forgive me. Mother of thousands. Oh, it's such a beautiful day today. It's like 24 degrees Celsius and sunny. But for the next like four or five days, we are supposed to get rain pretty much every day. I mean, we'll see if that actually happens. Weather is uh, not normally following the rules at this time of year, so it may not rain, but it, it would be lovely. I wouldn't have to water the garden. Look at this terrarium. Remember when we went hiking, we pulled up that seedling, sapling? Still alive. Prayer plant. I love these and they love being in a window. See this one? Okay, so it's around 7.45 now. The sun is just starting to set over the forest and it's beautiful out. I thought I would get started on the garden tour with you and Alex will join us when he's finished what he's up to. Also, let me show you the clay now. It's been a little while, a couple of hours maybe. It's definitely like a thick consistency. It's like weird chocolate milk. <laughs> So this garden back here has a bunch of squash and kale and radishes, a tomato plant, a bunch of nasturtiums. I'll show you, come look. Right at the entrance to this garden, I have a little patio stone and some rocks. And on each edge of the path, I've got this little creeping mint. Look at the cute little flowers. And then a petunia here and some basil and a chamomile and a coleus. 
so pretty. And then this has zinnias, more of that shisho, more of the lettuce leaf basil, and just sweet basil. And then on this side, I've got the petunias, the coleus. This is a, another chamomile, more beautiful purple basil. Marigold, first bloom on there. And look at this red petunia. Wow, and this one, it looks like it's like got silver on it. Doesn't it look like a drawing? No, it's got like gray on it. And then here is the sweet alyssum basket. It's like filled out now. This was four tiny plants and now it's like so cute. Got another little planter here and here. This one's actually just a broken plant pot. And I put some basil in there. This one has some herbs and some flowers, some of that nice sage, so pretty. And then this bed back here, it's growing slowly, but it is growing. It's got some zinnias. There's cosmos here as well. It's lined with the Alaskan dwarf nasturtium with no flowers yet. And then we've got a big chamomile growth here. And then my planters full of flowers and things. So this will probably bloom. I think this is two weeks away on this side. I've got the, what is it called? The best orange cherry tomato. This one is my favorite tomato from last year. This is green zucchini and a sunflower. Give me some flowers, baby. And then kale. Let's get some kale while we're here. This is like the baby kale garden. We're keeping these plants small. And here's another sunflower. Looking forward to that. And these are incorrectly marked. These are not watermelon radishes. These are the French breakfast radish. See how they're like long and outside of the ground. And then over here, we've got ground cherries, more nasturtium. These are both calendula and then a sunflower. Oh, another ground cherry. Have to weed this garden. Oh, look, a zinnia. Hey, baby. A zinnia is blooming. More radishes, more kale. We harvested so much kale yesterday. Look at, there's like none left on the dinosaur kales. Okay, and then from this side, you can see these pretty purple flowers. Aren't they so nice? They're putting out so many blossoms. I love them and I love this yellow marigold, I'm obsessed. I'm used to just seeing the orange and red ones and this yellow one is like golden and it looks so pretty with the pink petunias, don't you think? Yeah. I know, right? What a happy like color scheme this is, so summery. The dahlia is looking great. The zinnia bed has yet to explode with the zinnias, but it will. I believe we are like, a week away, people, and oh my gosh, the snapdragons are amazing. I'm just gonna pick a few of the snapdragons because before when I was just hanging out, I set up for the fire tonight and I picked some flowers, so I wanna do that with the snapdragons too. Just a few of them. I don't know why, but I felt like I wanted to make like a pretty fireplace. Do you want to see? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think some earths and flowers that were around the garden. I was just feeling like I wanted to see them all together in a way that is pretty to look at, but not like a vase. Isn't that pretty to look at? You know what I saw in Home Depot that I think might be useful for us? A flint starter. Ooh, I would fire. love a flint starter. $6. That's cool. It's like science class. Mm -hmm. So this is everything we've got in the garden right now. I've got some sage. I figured we could burn that today. That would be nice. But this is some of the herbs and flowers we've got blooming right now. I just thought it was pretty. Okay, so a zinnia is gonna be here before next week. That's exciting. Also, this kale is awesome. <laughs> I love having kale in every single garden. <laughs> So funny. Also, the violets, mm -hmm. not all of them survived. These ones didn't survive, but maybe the roots are alive still, so I'm not gonna pull it because they could pull through over the rest of summer. Chamomile looking great here. This is all calendula here. So that'll be like a nice big bush full of orange flowers. It's gonna be, oh, I'm so excited for the calendula. I don't think you understand. Also over here, look at these. Look at how pretty these are. And you wanna see a little treat? Mm. 
Ta-da! A secret snack. Okay. Here's a little radish. Ooh, this is one of the watermelon ones. It's gonna be beautiful. Oh, more radishes back here. I basically just put radishes everywhere because I feel like they only take like a month to grow and they're super like fun to harvest every day. Like, ooh, I'm just gonna have a snack. Also look, all the kale sprouted. I sprinkled kale seeds here. That's all red Russian. Let's go to the shade garden. Hi. Okay, what are we looking at? We're looking at beautiful, dainty, romantic cosmos. Why don't we pick a bouquet for the stream tomorrow? I feel like I've dropped, name dropped the stream like six times in this video. You should come join us Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Don't forget to subscribe, hit this like button. <laughs> yeah, don't forget. It sounded like you said hit dislike button. Oh, hit no, no, no. this like hit button. Hit this like button. Could you hold the kale for me so that I can pick a bouquet? So dainty. Ooh, I see some yellow flowers back there. Blue yeah, there's person. quite a bunch of them there. Okay. Bunch of flowers. A murder of flowers. It's like you're foraging in the field. Oh, look, all of the... These are all tiger lilies. These are gonna bloom by next week. Cool. Oh, that's so lovely. Yeah, I'm like, tra -la, la I'm just in a woodland, collecting flowers, like a forest fairy. That's all I ever wanted. I just wanted to live in a cottage in the forest. This is anemone. An enemy. An enemy. Not a friend, an enemy. It's an enemy. Yeah, it's not your friend, it's an enemy. Let's start on this side today. Let's go. Isn't so that pretty? Variegated. <laughs> it's like spotted, isn't that nice? Let's add that to our bouquet. Doesn't that look like foresty? It yeah. has hella forest vibes. Okay, so the chamomile here. Oh look, we have some basil coming up. Oh. The chamomile here coming up. See these tiny plants? These are from where I sprinkled chamomile tea. I ripped open a tea bag and sprinkled it. Look, I sprinkled it all the way over here as well. All these baby plants sprouted from a tea bag from the grocery store. Like we paid a dollar for a box of chamomile tea and it sprouted. Hey, it <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> and look at all the chamomile that's already blooming here. Isn't it pretty? All right. It's like little daisies. Add one of them to our bouquet. So this is gonna be bachelor's buttons. You can see we've got one row up there, one row right here, and then one row over there. And then we've got rows of cosmos and zinnias. And uh, I think this is a poppy. <laughs> There's a random tomato here and a ground cherry. Ignore the ground cherry and tomatoes, but the flowers here, they're not yet here. I think two more, two more weeks. I say that every single week. Next week, you guys. The, like this is so close. It's so close to making a flower. You wouldn't believe it. Same with these nasturtiums. Look at how much leafiness we have. It's got to be next week. Most likely. Our kale. It seems to double in size every single day. And look at the calendula bed. You can see how big it is from here. Look at this. You see that? Yeah. You see that? These are like gonna be so soon. <laughs> I'm so excited. And look at how much kale we are seriously getting. So much kale. So much kale. I've killed a few squash bugs on our squashes, which is not great. Here's more kale. They're like two-toned. And these ones, they're like white with purple. So lovely. More Cosmos. Oh, these ones have nice long stems. Oh. It's gonna rain for the next four days. Like I'm picking these flowers because the rain tomorrow is going to knock all the petals off anyway. Look, I can literally pick my wedding bouquet from this garden. The morning of. <laughs> the morning of the wedding. I think I'll probably do that. Oh, also Alex and I put in stakes for the tomatoes. Oh yes. You can see we put in six of them and I've got a tomato on each side. I transplanted my tomatoes when we had our last big rainfall. So that I've got two tomatoes for every post. Oh, look at these ones. We're getting close. And behind them are the squash. And behind the squash are the beans. green beans. Yeah. If they survive. <laughs> yeah, Poppy. Yeah, Poppy. And look, the soup tomatoes are probably like one week away. 
they're starting to like change. And look at this castor bean plant. It looks like it's from another time. Yeah. So magical looking. It looks dinosaur -y. It does, totally. Especially next to the dinosaur kale. So along the entire edge of that garden bed is the Alaskan dwarf nasturtiums. And then here I've got a few more nasturtiums and then the marigolds are really taking off. They look beautiful. The zinnias, probably next week we'll have flowers. Another castor bean plant. And look, these are my sweet potato vines. They're gonna make sweet potatoes. And look, I planted basil in between each marigold. So now I've got marigold, basil, marigold, basil. Look at those calendula, amazing. These are looking awesome. I think these are poppies. Holy mackerel, look at this. That's kale. so pretty. It's so pretty. I almost don't even want to take it off. It looks like a pretty plant. Whatever, it's going to grow so much during the next rainfall. More kale. Look at this bean plant making its way up the fence. <laughs> also, I have a passion... <laughs> Hi! What's up? You guys want some kale now, huh? Look at that. Look at my posse. <laughs> but look at this. This passion flower vine is from a cutting from my mom's very old plant and it is climbing up this very happily. This looks awesome. Hi guys, do you guys want some kale? Let's take a quick break so I can put that beautiful bouquet of flowers into some water and then we'll feed the chickens. What do you say? Sounds good. Aren't these pretty? Good job. You ready to feed some chickens? Hi. Right. let's go. Hi babies. Look at that full tummy. The little white one. Cute. I know. Oh, hello there. Good evening, everybody. Hey there, Fluff. The little bunny rabbit. Oh, hello. Have some kale. The fluffy ones underneath you. I know, that's why I have it so low. <laughs> Using you for shelter. Yep. Hey there, Poppy. Everybody loves a salad before bedtime. <laughs> it's good for. How about you? I miss Clover. Hey there, Fern. Fern may not know how to groom herself, but she knows how to eat. She definitely knows how to eat. Hi, Parsley. Okay, it's gonna be <laughs> free for all now. She just pecked right at it. I'm gonna just get the eggies. See what our haul is for today. What's your guess? 10. Did you look already? No. I think there's 10. Ta da! Today's eggs. Look at this pretty speckly one. Guess whose that is? Oh, uh, Clementine? Bluebell. Oh. This is Clementine. And Diane. And Buttercup. And Sunflower. And Marigold. I don't know whose this is. Question mark? Question mark? Okay, let's go show the last garden and then we can get a campfire started. All right. So we have these boxes here that have zinnias and a um, ground cherry, not ready yet. Sunflower, looking good. These boxes coming along. Chamomile looking great. Look at this pink flower. It's like pink and yellow and orange. Doesn't that look like tropical? It does. So pretty. Same with that one, it's like a sunset. <gasps> look! Yep. Our first nasturtium blossom. Welcome. Welcome. And yellow. This sunflower is gonna probably bloom this week. Look, the bloom is almost there. This little garden area has some pests. What does that mean? Look, all the leaves have been munched oh. on the cucumber and on the radishes. Some kind of jock. Some kind of munching insect. And then Alex put in these posts for me too, for these four tomato plants. So we have four more here. And look, our elder flowers blooming. So I wanted to do a handmade sort of food craft with this today, but it, every recipe I looked for 
said you needed like 15 heads and we have two open heads and a third one opening soon. So there's just not enough yet, but we can still enjoy them. And look at my narrow plantain. I've been picking out the flowers as they come so that it won't flower. But this is like a common weed here, but I've been kind of like fostering its growth. I pulled everything out from around it and I'm letting it sort of grow like as if I'm cultivating it. Isn't it pretty? Yep. Isn't that pretty? Put on the fire, don't you think? Yeah, so royalty. And look at all this basil. More of that beautiful kale. I got eggs, I got flowers. <laughs> and chakens. And chakens. And soon fire. Yes. These don't have a smell, but you know they're edible? Well, now I know. Yeah. Okay, uh, now it's time to start a fire. Do you want to yes. start collecting the stuff that we need and I'll start getting the actual fire yep. built? Awesome. Yep. You think we're going to see uh, the masked bandit of the... Uh, he comes around the same time every day, so maybe. I don't know how, but he does. It's like when we go in, he's coming in. I love summer fires. Also, look at the moon. Hello, moon. Well, I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy this fire while the sun goes down. And Alex will join me in a little while. Maybe we'll roast some marshmallows or a hot dog. Then it'll be time to put the chickies away. Wow, look at that. Also, before it gets too dark, there's the wisteria. It's pretty, eh? All right, the sun is going down now. It's about nine o'clock. I'm gonna put the chickens in as soon as these last ones head in for the night. I'll close them up. And then Alex and I are gonna sit and roast some marshmallows and I will check in with you if we can catch our raccoon, if we can catch him in the act of trying to come in here and sneak the rest of the grain. Other than that, that's it for the vlog for today, friends. I really hope you enjoyed hanging out with us with our chickens and in the garden and doing some fun stuff with me. I had a good time. I'll be back next week at the same time, so definitely stop by. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you will subscribe and join in on the journey. And if you're already subscribed, don't forget to click that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you so much to all of the patrons. Thank you for everyone who is supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate it. I really do. Thank you so much. And here is the list of the names of all of the patrons that we have on the team right now. Thank you so much to all of you. I really hope that you had an awesome day and I will see you next time. Bye. Mm. Our bandit has arrived. Alex just went to go get a light because you can't see anything. Dude, I'm literally like six feet away from you, my little bandit. You're not supposed to be in here at all. He's so cute. You need to go. You're not welcome here. Hello. I'm very close by. No, not back here. Go away. Yeah, he's definitely not going away. <laughs>